Hello and welcome to the wonderful world of tie-dye. I am Mr. Tie-dye and I'll be your host today for this next edition of Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-dye. <laughs> um, so, oh yes, thank you Alan for mentioning that. I know it's harder to do on the live streams to wait for those commercials to run, but if on just a regular basis on the other videos, you guys let those ads run, then I get just a little piece of that advertising money, and that definitely helps my channel. So, and there's a couple other ways you can help. There's uh, just regular donations, and in the description box of each video, there's a link where if you want to just donate a one-time thing, or if you click on the button that says join right below the video, then you can look at the memberships, and that just is something you can sign up for and pick a monthly amount and it just goes right into my account from there. So anyways, any of the support that I get, I truly appreciate that. And with the support, you get the little icons up there like uh, Steve has. You can see the little rainbow spiral there that he has next to his name. Well, that shows that he's a, a member supporting this channel. So thank you, thank you, everybody. Okay, so let's get started. So first off, I told you guys we were going to be doing a live auction. Uh, this has been kind of popular, so I'm just going to continue doing this for as long as there's interest. So this is the zigzag uh, DNA tapestry that we made, or I made, I made, we made, <laughs> uh, the last week. So I'm going to be auctioning this off so you guys can place your bids. Uh, in the box and then towards the end of the video then we'll pick the the highest amount and sell this thing off and then all you got to do is just send me your email address and I'll invoice you or you can even I'll put the my PayPal link up and you can just pay that way if it's easier so anyways today we're going to be doing a star Mandela so and the icon of the Mandela was up for the video preview, so it's going to be similar to that. So what I'm starting with is a tapestry that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out, so it's just barely damp. And then I've got this folded in half. So this here is my center line here that I creased it along. So I have kind of a small table here, so I can't open the thing all the way up, but we're going to slowly fold this thing up anyways. So the main thing though is keep track of where your center line is and one way to do that after you folded it into quarters so this here is in half and then I'm going to fold it into quarters and just to make sure then that you don't lose track of where your center is you can take a washable marker and just put a little dot there and that'll just remind you that that's your point uh, sometimes people will get started and then they'll end up tying off of one of these other corners here or they'll be doing a mandala and instead of working from the side with the fold they'll work on the side edge and that just puts a mandala on the side so anyway so this here is my center point so I've got this folded in quarters and I like to kind of smooth everything out here get it all nice and even and let's see, let me just greet some people here. We've got, who's in the house today? <laughs> okay, we got Stacy and Alan and Gwen and Becky, uh, Carmel, Ruthford Lynn, Tie Dye Magician. Hello, Rawl. Yeah, today I'm doing a Star Mandela. Uh, Miranda, thank you for your support. Uh, Timecraft. Is it cold there? Uh, no, I think it's about mid-60s here. It's an overcast sky. We had some rain earlier today, but now it's just cloudy out there, so not too bad. Hello from Ohio, North Carolina. Yep, I'm going to see if I can just keep on doing these uh, Wednesday live streams. It's been working out nice and with everybody home anyway, or a lot of us. I know there's a lot of people still out there working, but there's a lot of us at home, so I'm just trying to do my part to help entertain you guys. So, and these live feeds have been kind of fun. So, let's see. What else we got going on? 
I have a new washer and it spins with water. Uh, if your washing machine spins with water, what you can do is just set it towards the end of the cycle because at some point the spin cycle has to spin out the excess waters. So if, if yours spits water at the beginning, just set it maybe about halfway through the spin cycle and then run your, your spin cycle and that should get the, your water out. But yeah, it's a good thing to know whether it spits water or not because the water will dilute your soda ash and you don't want that. Oh, we got somebody from New Zealand. So, hello, Ann. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, oh, you're welcome, Gwen. I was, I'm glad to be able to help. Like I say, I try to spit out any kind of tips and tricks as I go along. None of these videos are planned other than just the design. So, as I go along and things occur to me, I just try to spit them out there. Uh, hello to from Jennifer from Sparks. Uh, let's see. From Florida. Uh, yeah, I've, I have heard of people turning their hot and cold water off to eliminate that. If your valves are easy to get to, then that's convenient. But some people, that their valves are not easy. You have to pull the washer out to get to them. So that's where you just set your cycle halfway through. But yeah, anything to just stop the water from spraying. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I, I told you I folded this in half, and now I've taken one of my corners and folded it up. I just laid it right along this other edge here. Make sure I'm in the screen here. So once again, this here is the center of my tapestry down here with the little blue dot. So I just folded that right along the edge there. And now what I'm going to do is I hold the center, and I'll hold out here at this edge and pick this up so I can fold this edge underneath. <clears throat> and what that's going to do is line this edge up over along under here. So we'll just pick that up and flip it. So now that edge is lined up over here and it's good to just kind of pick things up and straighten them out. So usually what I'll do is I'll just grab the center make sure that's lined up and then I line my corners up here. And then you can pick that up and shake it a little bit and lay it down just to make sure all your edges are nice and smooth there. And the other thing you can do on this, this here is the, what I call the airplane fold where we're just going to go back and forth with it. But you can also, if at the halfway point, you can draw your lines on and then do the accordion type fold or a pleated fold where you fold back and forth. But this, will, this airplane fold works nicely for this design here. Mostly because we're doing the same colors on the top and the bottom. So I can saturate it pretty good before I flip it over. And you'll see that, of course, at the end. So, hello from New Jersey. Oh, you made it, Lois. Nice to see you. And you made it into the chat room. Uh, uh, Alan's up in North Portland. David in Colorado. Jackie in Auckland, New Zealand. Nice. Good to see people from all over the place. Okay, so I got this edge here folded and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab the center and I'm going to grab up here and flip this under so that this edge will line up underneath right over here. So, and once I get that, then I try to just make sure that I have everything lined up nice and neat here. And I can also see this here is the, the top of my tapestry that's an edge. That's something that I, I like to keep an eye on to know just where that is at. So I usually will make a mark on there. But we're going to flip this around now. And then, like I say, as I open this up, there's the, the edges of my tapestry right there. So that's what that mark is letting me know. The other thing with putting your mandala on, uh, you have the option, see if I can draw out here where one of your points I can, <laughs> is going to be up like this, or you can have two of your points up towards the top. So you can decide which way you want to have your tapestry or your Mandela oriented with either one point or two points up. And that is accomplished by which way you fold. So that's why you wanna keep track of these edges here. If you want one point up, then your first line is gonna start up here and go down this way here. If you want two points up, then you're gonna start from this other side over here and come down this way. 
So that's just one thing to decide which way you want it oriented. And then the next thing what I'm going to do is draw lines. I'm just going to draw them zigzag going down the tapestry. Kind of like that. Now you can just freehand it. Or the other thing you can do is if you want to get your angles even is use a, a protractor and line things up and decide on your angle that way. Or if you don't have a protractor, you can make an angle. So what I did is I chose 55 degrees to be my angle. So I could line up 55 degrees on my protractor and draw my line and then orient it. But I also made this handy dandy angle right here and I did that same thing. So I set this at 55 degrees, lined up my protractor right at the center or right at the corner there and then I drew my line and folded my paper over. So now I have the 55 degree angle here which is going to allow me to mark my lines fairly easily on my tapestry. So like I say, this here is the edge of my tapestry. I want to go down maybe four or five inches. So I'm going to start my tapestry right there. And I'm just rambling on here. Let's see what's going on here with the chat room. Okay, not much going on there. So, But if you guys do have questions, you can post them in the chat room and I'll answer them as we go along here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just line this up. So here's the my point and I'm going to put one of the straight edges right along this edge and then my line is going to go right along this other edge here. And then you can just line up one of your flat edges on this other line here. So I just rotated my, my center point from here over to here. Line this edge up here and then you're going to do that same thing. You're just going to draw your line down. And this here is going to get your angles nice and even going all the way down. But if you want to just freehand it, like I say, that's a, another option there. But this here is just an easy way to get the same angles going down. And you don't even need a protractor, really. You can just fold the, the paper to the, a nice angle that you like and just go for it. But I did see somebody, they made their own protractor. So they went online and found picture of a protractor with the angles and they printed that out and laminated it with all their angles on there and then that's what they use when they're doing their tie-dye so that was kind of an ingenious little trick so however you want to do it so I'm just going to continue with my zigzags all the way down here uh, let's see David's asking, where did you get your bulk cotton fabric for your tapestry? So when I'm buying just fabric, I usually buy that from Dharma. Uh, I have bought some from Joanne. But as far as this tapestry blank here, this is a Sunshine Joy blank. And it's got these little uh, hooks in the corners for hanging them. So you can just look up sunshinejoy.com and click on their tapestry tab. And one of the options is the blank white tapestries. Select that, and then they have the tapestries in many different sizes. And if you want to buy from an artist, then uh, Bo Dorsey, he makes tapestries, and I believe they're made from a hemp slash organic cotton, and he sews those in various sizes, and I think you might even be able to order custom sizes from him. But you can find Bo Dorsey on Facebook. And I should have asked him before, I just toss his name out there I'm hoping that's okay but anyways so those are some places to buy tapestries from if I want a really big tapestry then I'll buy the flat sheets uh, queen size or full size from Target online they do sales every now and then I think the brand is called threshold and they're just a 300 thread count cotton sheet and they seem to work good I just do a, a pre-wash on them so we're just about down to the tip here. So it's easy enough just to keep drawing your line, just kind of zigzag back and forth all the way down to the bottom here, or to the point. And remember, I put a little dot in the point here so that I could remember where it is. So I'm doing good because my point is right there. So let's see. Hey, Mole. Uh, and we got Diego from Brazil. 
Uh, thank you. I, I love what I do and big hugs back to you and everybody else out there. I hope everybody's doing good during this shutdown, trying to remain calm and we're all going to get through this. Well, not, I guess that's, we'll just leave it right there. <laughs> okay, I think I'm just about ready to start tying this up here couple more lines all right we'll call that good right there so toss that away and now what I'm gonna do I like to tie mine up with kite string I'm going to have that handy here and I usually will start here at the top uh, I've started down at the point before and that that works too but I just find that sometimes I have more of a trouble with my things coming undone if you also you have these big clamps you can clip things into place to make it easier to start but I'm just going to start right up here at the top just because that's how I like to do it so what I'm going to do is just put creases or accordion folds and just line my creases up right there on the top. And I'm not doing these real thick. I try to do them kind of as thin as possible. We do have several layers of fabric here. So I want to just make sure that my die gets through there so I don't want to fold this up too awful thick. But just enough to be able to get my ties in. There's my first one. I gotta flip this around just to tie this off, but I usually will wrap my kite string around a few times. And this first one, I'll tie it just to make sure that it doesn't loosen up, but then the rest of them, I'll just leave it loose. I'll wrap it two or three times and then fold the next one. Okay, Jenny says, I made a big tie-dye tapestry, but I forgot to add soda ash to the water before I dyed it. It's already soaked for two days. Is it too late to add soda ash, or what can I do? No, it's not too late to add the soda ash. Uh, soda ash is what actually activates the dyes. So what I would do is just break your tapestry out, and I usually will put some soda ash just in a regular dye bottle and you can just squirt it on just like you would dye. So I would just go ahead and coat the, the whole tapestry, let it kind of soak in a little bit, and then I would flip it over and just put a coat over top of it and let that soak in and then start your batching process. Because right now your dyes aren't active, so it's just been sitting there. So once you add the soda ash, then your dyes will start bonding. And at that point, wait uh, 24 to 48 hours and then do your washing. So I hope that helps. Oh, hi, Christina, you're still working? Well, tell them it's Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-Dye and you need to leave early today. Okay, so I'm going to start folding the next one. Uh, usually this first fold is just a little bit difficult to get started because I just tied this off right here. But if you just kind of poke your finger under there, you can kind of just poke that up just a little bit to get a little bit of a crease started. And once you get that one done, then you can usually get the next one. But I usually have to manhandle it, so I just reach underneath and just push that into place. And what I'm basically doing is taking this line here and folding it straight up so it's matching this line on the side here. So you just want to put these two lines right together. And you just have to kind of manhandle it and make sure that you still have all your creases in here. You don't want to lose one of your creases because then things are going to bunch up underneath. So let's see. Good afternoon first for the first time. Nice to see you. Uh, let's see, we got Michael in the house, Trisha, hello, that's one of my friends there. 
Uh, Jenny, you're you're welcome. I'm glad to be of help. Uh, the soda ash is something that can be done. Like I say, I pre-soak mine. Some people will fold theirs first and then soak it, but I have also uh, soaked it in plain water, tied it, dyed it, and then added the soda ash on. So they just have to come into contact at some point before you batch it. So you still have plenty of time. So glad that was able to get that solved because that's no fun to have all the work into a tapestry to only have it not turn out. Okay, so I've got the next one wrapped up here. Like I say, what I'll usually do is just kind of wrap that around three times just to keep it tight and then I just set my string down and I'm going to flip this around and fold the next one here. And once again, it just takes a little bit of manhandling to get it started there. I'm just trying to make sure I got the, my line coming up here. I just want to make sure that it's going straight down on the other side. If it's coming off to the side like this, then it's just going to go a little wonky. So, and I can feel that my bottom layer here is not wanting to stay in place. So, I'll use one of my clamps here. We'll just take care of that. Okay, that's just to kind of hold that in place because that bottom layer is wanting to slide on me. So, let's see. Just did a 6x8 today. Awesome. Yeah, I love doing tapestries and... A lot of times I just I don't take the time to sit down and do them so doing these tapestries on the live videos has just been kind of fun for me too because I love to make them and I just need to make time to do it and right now that time is turned into being Wednesdays with you guys so okay and we're just gonna keep going all working our way all the way down here just the same process of Doing the accordion fold and tying it off here. And like I say, two or three times around is enough to hold that nice and tight and set your string back down. Hey Terry, yep, I'm doing well. I hope everybody else out there is doing well too. Let's see. Oh, thank you Terry, I'm glad. I love making tie-dyes and I love helping other people make tie-dyes. I want everybody to have success. So that's why I make these videos. I make them so that everybody that wants to try tie-dye can have uh, success from it. Uh, can the soda ash be added in powdered form? Um, I haven't done it that way, but like for ice dyes, it, it's done that way. So if you did an ice dye, then yeah, you could do that. But one way or another, you'll need to make sure that soda ash gets down in there. So um, you might have to use more water doing it in powdered form, sprinkling the powder on and then spraying water through it to get it through, but yeah, I suppose you can do it that way. I just haven't done it that way myself. The liquid form works better for me unless I'm doing an ice dye. And if you're doing an ice dye and adding it and some more ice, I would also add a little bit more dye to it just in case. That's what I would do. I'm not saying that you have to do it, but that's something you can kind of judge for yourself whether you want to add more dye or not. If you're adding more soda ash and <clears throat> um, the powdered soda ash and water. Oh, hi, uh, Mir Nicole. So, how did you how did you like doing the live video? Uh, they're a little bit more stressful just trying to get everything planned and make sure everything is ready, but I'm sort of getting into a, a thing with it, being that I've been doing these every Wednesday now for a few weeks. But it's certainly different than just making a video that you can stop and edit and 
cut it just the way that you like it. Live video, you just got to be on your game. So, and thank you, thank you. Yeah, I love what I do, and I love sharing it with others. Um, Terry asked the kind of dye that I use. I am using Procyon dyes. They're a, a fiber reactive dye. That's why I pre-soak in soda ash, because the soda ash is what actually activates these dyes by raising the pH level. And let's see. These are the kind of dyes that I use right here. I'll put the link in the chat room. This is where I buy most of my dyes from is Dharma. <clears throat> but they can be bought from other places. I've also purchased some from Custom Colors in North Carolina and from Grateful Dyes in Colorado. But Procyon dyes are the, the really good ones that most of the dyers are using now. I've been using them for 20 years and really have enjoyed the, the colors that I get from them. So. Oh, hey Cassie in the UK. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I, I love helping people. So I'm glad that you were able to find some videos to work with and create some tie-dye. I love spreading the the joy around the world of people having success with tie-dye. Okay, we're getting down to the end here, so I'm just making sure once again that all my layers are staying folded in there. So you just have to kind of adjust them and pull things out as needed. And then I put this clamp back on just to try to hold things in place there. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm glad to be of, be of help wherever I can. I felt called to share my knowledge a couple years back. Had a few different people ask me about doing videos. So, feeling called, I decided I better get out there and share my knowledge. And then it turned into just a great joy of helping people. And I love hearing stories from all around the world of people that have started doing tie-dye or they've started a business or they've changed their college major to arts. I just love to create and tie-dye is just a really fun medium because there's so many possibilities with it. Okay. Just about down to the end here. These last ones, there's not much to fold in there. So what I'll usually do is just kind of line them up. So now that I'm down here to these last few folds, I'm just going to line my string right up along that line and wrap it around a couple times. And then as I pull that tight, I can just kind of help guide it with my finger to make sure that it creases up just a little bit right there and bunches up. So we'll do the same thing over here. I can just kind of start one fold and wrap that around and then pull that a little bit tight. And you can also use sinew with this if you want white lines in here. Um, I didn't want that one want this one like that but I have done that in the past if I was doing an ice dye I might have used sinew with this but this one here we're going to do a liquid dye on it so two more to go here and then we'll be ready one piece you've done is your all-time favorite um, I've been asked that before I don't know if I have one all-time favorite but some of my favorites I have a flower of life that I did that one is still mine I haven't put that one up for sale because I do love it I have a peace sign with a hand 
and a chakra buddha those are three that hang in my house right now and another one that i did that was a really fun one and i sold it here last year but is uh paul the alien landing tapestry and i think i have a picture of that one on my facebook page so anyway yep i just i love tie-dye in general Oh, uh, question is, what would you recommend for washing out the t-shirts after rinse them? Uh, Simi mentioned something about Blue Dawn. She says it's impossible to get a hold of in the UK. Um, I'm not sure. I personally use Synthropol soap from Dharma. I know a lot of people use the Blue Dawn, but I'm not sure what other options uh, for soaps are. The main thing, the Blue Dawn and the Synthropol are pH negative soaps or pH neutral soaps. Uh, since these dyes are activated with soda ash, you don't want a laundry soap that has soda ash in it because then you're going to reactivate the dyes that come out of your, your t-shirts or tapestries in into the water and then it's going to back stain. So if you can't get Synthropol or Blue Dawn and you can't find another soap, I would probably go with no soap as compared to using uh, a soap that has soda ash in it so but that's just my opinion but it, if there's other dyers out there that maybe have another suggestion for her please kick in uh, she's in the UK and looking for alternative soaps for washing okay so now I got that done so what I'm going to do is just kind of wrap this back up so I just go back over my same tie lines to get it back up here and then I'm going to tie this off back up here at the top and then we're going to scrunch this outside and then we're going to start putting some dye on this oh and I don't know did I don't know if we had any bids yet I was trying to pay attention but anyway since we're getting closer to the halfway point, I am auctioning this zigzag tapestry off today. I will announce the winner at the end as long as it's somebody's bid more than just five dollars on it. But we'll auction this off at the or you can place your bids now, and I will announce the winner at the end of this uh, video here. So if you want the zigzag tapestry. Go ahead and place your bids in the comment section here. And I'll take a scroll and see if I can find any bids, but I don't think I saw any come in yet. Okay, no, no bids yet. So right now our top bid is at uh, $50. Okay. <clears throat> okay, top bids at 55. And sorry I don't have one of those auction voices to announce the auctions here. We'll just buy we'll call out the numbers as I see them go up. Uh, the tapestry is about 54 inches by 56 inches. And like I say, it does have the, the loops in the corners for a hanging on the on your wall or your ceiling or wherever you want to put it and two of the edges are these salvage edges and two of the edges are hemmed so it's it's I've had a, a lot of good luck with these sunshine joy tapestries well in fact there's the little label there sunshine joy anyway so those have been really nice tapestries so we got 70 71 as the high bid 72 Okay, so this outer edge here, I'm just going to scrunch this up. We're going to do rainbow on this, and we're going to do probably the black and the uh, cobalt like I did for the, the zigzag tapestry. I just really like that mottled look there of the darker colors. So I'm going to put that around the tapestry here. Okay, oh, show the tapestry. Yeah.
So there's two zigzags on here. So this is one of the zigzags. And they run, I have it oriented so they run top to bottom, but you can turn it sideways if you want and run them side to side. But yep, yeah, that's the rainbow colors for the zigzag and then cobalt and black for the, the model area here. And then of course there's the other zigzag there. So we're up at $80 for the tapestry now. So thank you guys for bidding. Let me get a drink of water here. Thank you. Okay, we have 85 for the tapestry now. Okay, now we're going to tie off this top and then I can start putting some colors on. 86 for the tapestry. Like I say, I'll announce the winner at the end, so you guys still have more time. I just remembered that I hadn't seen any bids yet, so I didn't want to wait till the, the last minute and have you guys try to bid. Okay. So now we are about ready to splash some color on this. Oh, and how many of you guys joined me for the 420 celebration? Either on here or one of my other pages, posting comments and stories and pictures and stuff. That was just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I still haven't gotten through all of the, the stories yet, but I really enjoyed all of the stories you guys posted about how I've helped you in your tie-dye in one way or another, whether it was for a particular design or to... Some people, I think, started businesses, and... Okay, we got a $100 bid. Tie-dye with Ernie Cox. Thank you, Ernie. So, yeah, the... The tie-dye, uh, the 420 celebration was just kind of haphazardly put, a, put together. I... Somehow it just snuck up on me, and all of a sudden it was time to start doing... The 420 giveaways and I still didn't have a game plan yet so I just kind of figured all those out just on the on the fly and then I decided last minute to do a, a live giveaway for the for the big tapestry so that was kind of fun okay so what I'm doing now is just setting this up I'm going to be dying just from the the top side only to start with to let my dyes kind of soak all the way through i like to see a little bit of dye coming through on the other side before i flip this over and start adding dye because the problem is is if you put dye on this top side and with the really uh with the great number of layers we have that's the main thing if you're doing just a spiral on t-shirt it's fine but when you're doing lots of layers like this one here and the star flower and things like that I die from just the top only and as soon as I start seeing dye down here then I'll flip it and dye it or what oh I was saying okay that if if you uh, put your dyes on this here top side and then you flip it over and you put dyes on the bottom side if there's any soda ash it's basically going to be trapped in the middle. So here's your die from the bottom, here's your die from the top, and in this middle spot is going to be a layer of soda ash, which is going to be white. And then you just kind of have locked that in to the middle of your tapestry. So this here is a way that you can avoid that by having your tapestry die from just the top only, and then by putting a clean dry towel underneath, it's going to help pull any of the liquids that are still in there. It's going to help pull down through the bottom there. Okay. Let me see. I want to see the tapestry again. I think they're trying to figure out their bidding here. 
So I think, let's see, the tapestry right now is sitting, the high bid is $100. And this here, like I say, is a zigzag DNA, zigzag DNA that I tied up in last week's live video. So it just has these zigzag stripes going all the way down. And it's got the black and the cobalt. And there's two of the zigzag stripes on the tapestry. So there you go. Okay, so we're going to start putting some color on this here. I'm going to do it in the rainbow colors. Oh, let me get some gloves on. I'm roll my sleeves up. Does anybody know a good place to get large amounts of dye in the southern hemisphere? Yeah, I don't know that, but yeah, there might be somebody that can help with that. There is one link here from Paula Birch that... She has dyes from around the world, so I can post that to see if that might help you. That has lots of links in different places, so I personally haven't bought anything from there, but I've passed that link out to a lot of people, so maybe that might help you. Uh, let's see. Uh, somebody said they were just on the site and want to know, is there a kit or buy separate colors? Yes, the, the Dharma site does have kits. They come in various sizes and they include everything you need for tie-dye, except for the t-shirt, of course. Um, or you can buy separate colors. And for separate colors, I recommend at least starting with your primary colors and at least one black. So your primaries would be lemon yellow, turquoise, and fuchsia. And then from Dharma, my favorite standalone black would be Raven Black. But I mix three different blacks together to get mine. And if you're buying from Custom Colors, then the, the black that I like is called Dark Black from Custom Colors. So, okay. Oh, and David wants to buy a towel for $20. <laughs> It's just really just one of my towels here. If you're serious about that, you can send me a message and we can talk about that. Okay. Let's see if we got anything more before I go in. Uh, are there hoodies you use to tie-dye expensive? Um, I buy them wholesale, and I think I pay, I think, $13 or $14 for blank hoodies. Um, I know there's other sites that sell them besides just the wholesale, but I haven't looked into those. I think you might be able to buy them direct from Hanes. These, I use the Hanes Ultra Cotton hoodies, and they are 90% cotton and 10% polyester. And I believe the polyester is all on the inside of those hoodies. So I gotta get my dye set up so we can get to work here. I get distracted chatting with you guys and not getting work done. So let's see, one more question. How much liquid dye does two ounces? Of that? Um, I, I don't have an estimate for that. Um, I don't buy the, the two ounce bottles, I buy mine either in the one pound or the five pound jars. So I'm not sure how much dye that makes up, but somebody else that buys those small ones might have an idea for you here in the chat room. So I got our rainbow colors. Um, like I say, I'm gonna put black and cobalt out here. So I want one of my brighter colors out here. So I think I'm gonna start with fuchsia out here at the edge. So what I'm going to do is just start coloring right here. I'm going to leave just a little bit of space by the line here until I get my other color on there. And like I say, this here is going to be a process of putting layers of dye on and then coming back and adding more layers of dye until I can start seeing the colors soak through to the other side. Uh, 
Uh, somebody asked if I had, if I've ever done spray dye. Uh, if so, is it hard to spiral with? Um, I have sprayed my dyes on when I'm doing like a, a stencil or something. I'll put my, my dyes into a, a bottle. I think I bought it from Dharma. It puts out a really fine mist, but I don't know if that's what you're talking about. It sounds like spray dyes might be um, a, from a kit that you buy in the store. And if that's so, then I haven't worked with those before. Oh, thank you, Trish. Yes, I know you love your dyes. You've got just a whole ton of them from me, don't you? <laughs> okay, and thank you, Emily, for answering a question for Carrie about the amount of dye that you get out of uh, the bottles there. I appreciate when other people help in where I, I don't know an answer. A lot of times somebody will know an answer. So I appreciate people helping other people out. Okay, and the colors I'm using, I got fuchsia, I have deep orange, and these are all Dharma colors. Deep orange, this is daffodil that I add a little bit of lemon yellow into. This here is my emerald green. I do have a, a few different shades of various colors in the rainbow, but... <clears throat> The emerald green and the deep orange are two of my favorites for this. And then for my purple, I use plum. So when you're thinking about buying dyes, those are just some of my favorite colors for the, the rainbow. Um, do you recommend the squeeze bottles Dharma cells? Yes, these here are Dharma bottles. Um, of course, they were bought a long time ago. These were even longer ago. You can tell one is skinny, one is taller or shorter and fatter. Uh, these are both from Dharma, and I've liked them. The, every now and then I get a leak in there, but you can wrap the thing with a little bit of plumber's tape, and that will help take care of that problem. But yeah, when I like the bigger bottles, I use the ones from Dharma. And then if I want the little bottles for my finer detail work, <clears throat> I use these here. <clears throat> These are a four ounce bottle and they got these nice little metal tips on those and I get those from Amazon. Let's see. Here is a link for these little bottles from Amazon. I just put that in the chat room there. So and those work really nice too. But the bigger ones, sometimes when you're applying a lot of dye, you just need a big bottle. And these ones from Dharma do work well for me. <clears throat> Tim asked, uh, after the dyes are mixed, how long are they good for? I have my dyes sit around for two to three weeks at room temperature. And here in Oregon, my room temperature is somewhere between uh, 65 and 70 degrees. But one of the ways to tell how long they've been sitting around is I put a piece of duct tape on my bottles and then I write the date right on there. So that at the point that they're two to three weeks old, I can decide whether I want to add another scoop of dye to it. So like green, if they've been, if my green dye has been around for three weeks, I add another, uh, for two weeks, I'll add another scoop of dye. Most of the rest of the dyes, if they're around for three weeks, I'll add a scoop, another scoop. And by scoop, I mean a, a rounded tablespoon. And that just helps freshen them up. But I only do that one time because if you get too much dye, keep adding into there, then you're gonna end up with sludge in there. And that's, that's no fun because then it clogs your nozzles and stuff. So at that point, I try to make sure I use up my dyes and then mix new. But yeah, these will stay around. And if you have a refrigerator, these dyes will last even longer. So, but I don't have a spare fridge to store all of my dyes in. But on the really hot days, I'll take some my rags, I'll wet them, and then I'll toss them over top of my dye bottles just to help keep them cool.
Uh, is it hard to spiral if you are a beginner? No, the spiral is one of the easier designs to do. It's just a matter of taking your time and straightening. And I do have uh, a video on spiral, and it also shows uh, eight different ways of dyeing the spiral to get different results. So you can just look up the spiral video on my channel, and that will walk you through the detail. That's um, I, it might even be in my beginner's playlist. I'll have to look at that and see. Do you use your urea? I, I do sometimes, not all the time. For the first 10 years of dyeing, I just mix my powdered dyes with just plain water. And then I heard about the, the uses of the urea, allowing you to mix more dye powder into smaller amounts of water and that it helped keep things wet. And I started using urea, but at this point, sometimes if I don't have it mixed up, because I mix up usually a big jug of dye water uh, and then pour it into gallon jugs for me to use from to mix my dyes, but there's sometimes I don't have it mixed up and I'll just if I just want to get right to work, I'll just mix them up with just plain water. So urea does work, but it's it's not something that's required. But if you're doing like dye painting and I mix up thick dye to do a dye painting on a t-shirt, then I use urea in that because it will help keep the, um, I'm losing track of where I'm at here. <laughs> it will help keep your, your dyes moist while it, they bond on the dye painting. So let's see. So now I'm going to go back through and well let me add my colors back here. I'm going to put my cobalt down first. And let that start soaking in. And then I'm going to go through and apply another coat of dye. I can already start seeing little white fibers poking up on all the different creases here. So to me, that, that tells me that the dye has soaked in and dried those little fibers out so they're standing up. So that's just a, a cry for more dye. So I'm going to add more dye to each one of these, and then I'll check the bottom and see how we're doing. And as you get down into the smaller sections, and of course less dye is required in there because there's less fabric. But these bigger ones are definitely going to need at least two, maybe three coats of dye before I flip it over. Soda ash is more important than urea to have. Yes, it is. Soda ash is what's going to activate these dyes. The urea just kind of helps a little bit with the mixing, and it helps keep them wet longer. But if you're putting yours in a bag, or like I say, I put mine into a tub with a lid, or if you cover them with plastic, then you don't have much problem with the moisture. Unless you live in a really dry climate, then urea might be a really lifesaver for you because... Your dyes, your t-shirts or your tapestries need to stay wet while the dye batches. If the dye dries out, then nothing's really happening with them. So that would be a case where urea might be really useful for you. But yes, I do use urea when I have the time to mix up my dye water because it just I think it adds just a little bit of extra color there and also like I say allows me to mix up more dyes and I always mix my dyes real heavy so the video I show of me mixing dyes and I put a little chart up that's just the basic amounts I usually use more dye than that in my my video in my the dyes that I make up okay so now I'm going to go through and add more color to each one of these and let that soak in let's see
Hello, Christy. Nope, you're not too late. I'm just at the point of dying this now. And our auction, I think it's topped out at $100 right now for the tapestry. But, yep, we're just getting this dyed. Like I say, I'm dying from just the top right now. And at some point, I'm going to flip this over. I can't quite see any dye soaking through just yet. Some of these smaller ones, I can already see some dye soaking through. So, we're doing good. And I put it onto a clean, dry towel, which just helps pull the liquid down through the tapestry. So, you made it just in time. Uh, hey, Jamie. Uh, let's see. Thank you for all of your comprehensive videos you posted. You're a great teacher. I learned a lot from you when I first started. Oh, you're welcome, and I'm glad to be a help for you. That's my ultimate goal, is to help people have success. So, when I felt a calling to share my, my knowledge of tie-dye, which is over, well, going on 20 years now, um, I just kind of stepped up, because my new motto is, be the change you wish to see in the world. So, this is me being that change. So, thank you and you're welcome. And hello, uh, Spurton. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's awesome, James. Yep, ultimately, that's what most of us like to do is to be able to make our work and to sell it. So I'm glad to be able to help you do that. I've had a few people recently ask me if if they minded me, if they minded if they sold tapestries that they learned from watching one of my videos. And I told them, nope, that's perfectly fine. I, I am sharing all of my, my ideas, my tips and tricks with the intent of you guys learning and using them. And if that helps you in your business, then I think that's fantastic. So yes, anything that I post out there, you guys are free to copy and use it however you like. The one thing I do like is if you guys tag me in a post so I can see what you're doing. I love looking at other people's artwork. So, let's see, what else we got going on here? Uh, somebody's asking about a good book. I, I don't... I haven't had a, a book on tie-dye myself. I, I bought some CDs way long ago from Dharma. I can't even remember the people's name, but uh, as far as a book, I don't know of, of a book at this time. If anybody else knows of a book, will you guys please post those so that they can find those? I've been asked to, to do a book myself, but I haven't figured that out just yet, so let's see. I think I just coated each one again, so I'm going to let those soak a little bit. Let me look at this. I think I got enough cobalt soaking through there. I'm going to add just a little bit more to the top side here, and then I'm going to put black on. Oh, that's great. I'm glad. Thank you, Sertin. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Kristen. Yep, I've been having fun doing these live videos and trying to make it a regular schedule so that more people can work it in and come see me. We got 46 people watching right now. So, cool. Oh, Sarah says, everyone watching should like the video. Yes, that would be great. <laughs> Any of you guys that make comments and give me a thumbs up when you're liking stuff, that's, that really does help my channel a lot. So thank you for mentioning that, Sarah. Uh, when you typically dye, you don't use a towel down. Any particular reason why you have one? 
Uh, the main reason I have one down today is because I have many layers of fabric here and I'm dying from just the top. I want them to, to soak down through. When I'm doing most of the other designs, there's fewer layers, so I don't need to worry about that. But this here, the towel is helping pull the, the liquid through. So even like any excess soda ash is gonna be pulled out the bottom, but it's just gonna encourage the liquid to come down. And I can already see now, let's see if I can flip this around. I have enough, I think, in all of these smaller sections here uh, I'll probably add a little bit more in these top two, but the rest of them, I might add maybe the top four, I'll add more dye to. But I like to see dye coming through the bottom side here. And the towel, if there's any liquid in here, it's going to pull it down into the towel, which encourages then the movement of the dye to go through. So that's the main reason why I have one down right now. Let's add some more fuchsia. Uh, Laura, can I have a link to where you get the dyes? Yes, I have that right here. I buy mine mostly from Dharma, but I have bought some from Custom Colors and some from Grateful Dyes in North Carolina, or Grateful Dyes in Colorado. The Custom Colors is North Carolina. A lot of people will buy from the, the dye house that's closest to them to save on shipping time and costs. I know Dharma shipping to the East Coast is just a little bit expensive for people and is slower, but since I live in Oregon, I get mine in just three days. So I think I need a little bit more purple here. Yeah, that's peak. I'm going to let that sit here, so I'll check out what's going on in the chat room here. When you thicken dye, is urea absolutely necessary? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, thickening of the dye, if you're just using it to help control the flow or you want the nice outlines, you can use just the sodium alginate. Uh, I originally got the recipe that I did the first video from a, I can't think of his last name. His first name is Ed, but he was doing a lot of dye painting. And when you're doing dye painting, then the urea is definitely necessary because it's a wetting agent and it's gonna help keep things wet longer. So when you're doing a dye pa painting on the t-shirt, there's not much fabric there in the t-shirt and it will dry out really fast. So that's the main reason to use urea in your dyes is if you're doing the dye painting. So yeah, you can thicken uh, with just plain sodium alginate. Uh, hello, uh, Rimsey. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but welcome. Seems to be a 10 second delay. I see links before you react. Oh yeah, there is. I'm not sure just what that is. I can see it on my screen whenever I'm doing any dyeing or talking and moving my hands up on the screen. It's not doing that, but then it catches up 10 seconds later or whatever. So yes, that's, I think, just part of being live on YouTube. Oh, thank you, Alight. I love you too, and I just have fun creating and sharing my knowledge so that more people can have success. Try tapping the live button on the video. It should jump you forward. Okay. Let's see what else is going on here. <laughs> I like that, Kristen. She says that I live 10 seconds forward into the future. <laughs> and yes, wouldn't, that wouldn't be great if we could all live just a little bit further into the future? It's coming. 
We're, we're going through a paradigm shift right now, and time is speeding up. If you guys haven't noticed that, well, I think that's part of this new paradigm that we're going to move into. Time is going to look and feel differently to us. And it's hard to really understand it from here, but at some point, I think we'll all just know. Okay. I think this is my last coat on these ones here. Let that soak a little bit more. I'll probably put a little bit more dark dye on there. Let that soak in a little bit. <sighs> okay. Well, I think we're getting closer to flipping this over and putting some color on the bottom side. I'm going to add a little bit more purple up here. I don't see quite enough soaking through. And that's something, this here, just being patient with your dyes is really just going to pay off in the long run. If you just carefully assess the situation and wait the amount of time that you need to for your dyes to soak in, then you're going to have better results. So I just keep adding a little bit of dye at a time and just let it soak down inside there. And I just keep checking it. One of the things you can do to speed it up is a little bit of pressure. So when I'm working on small things, I use my cuticle pusher to kind of push the dye deeper into my things. Um, you can also use, I've used pliers to squeeze with, or you can even use your towel. So I'll put this towel down and then just use the weight of my body to kind of lean on that and just press that down in there more. But all of these things are just going to help increase your, your chances of having your dye turn out the way that you want to do it. So I think I'm going to peek one more time. And I'm going to add a little bit more fuchsia. Fuchsia is still not, you can see my what it's looking like right there. So the fuchsia, I can see it coming through in some of these creases, but it's still not quite as much as the rest of these are. I'll probably add a little bit more purple up here to this one and a little more fuchsia. But the rest of these, I think, are looking pretty good. That's telling me that there's a lot of dye in those areas. So, things are soaking in nicely. And then, like I say, we'll flip this over and just a few minutes here. Oh, I was going to add more fuchsia up here. That's where I wanted it. And a little more purple in this one. Okay. What do we have going on now? Oh, thank you, Trish. Yep, layering the dye is just what it's about. And it is fun to, to layer it when you're working with uh, two different colors. It's a little trickier on something like this, this thick. That's why I added a couple layers of the, the cobalt, and then I put black over top. Because I don't want to get all of the cobalt all the way down through the tapestry and then have the black just on the outside. So you kind of got to do a mix on that. So I put two layers of cobalt, then I put black on there, and then I put just a little bit more cobalt. But that's going to help the black move down in there. And I'll probably put just a little, well, in fact, I'll put a little bit more black on right now. But it is something that it just, it just takes some practice too of getting to know just how your dyes are flowing. Yeah, and I think I was just kind of answering that question. Uh, Steven uh, just asked, how do you manage to put the right amount of dye? Uh, for something like this here, it's a matter of checking the bottom side and looking for the dye to come through. On some of the other things like doing a, a spiral, 
where you don't have as many layers, then you can use a cuticle pusher and open up your creases. It doesn't work so much for this here because the dye has soaked into these layers, so I can't see, I can't see all the layers that are hidden down in there. But if you're doing just a spiral design, then a or a scrunch or something like that, you can open that up enough to look down inside. But for something like this here with lots of layers, the the main way that I get the correct amount of dye on it is by opening or by flipping it over and looking at the bottom side and seeing the dye coming through in all of the places. I still need to get a little bit more dye on these ones and this one here before I'm going to flip this over because I like to see more dye than that on the bottom side before I flip it. And sometimes I'll put dye on and then I will go do something else for 10 or 15 minutes and come back to it just so that I can be as patient as I need to be. Sometimes it's hard to be patient when you're just sitting right here in front of it. And of course I got to do that right now because I can't just get up and walk away from you guys. So while I sit and wait for this, that's where I'll answer more of you guys' questions. Can you tell everybody to be careful when they originally hold the, when they originally told her bottle so it doesn't? Um, I'm not sure. I might have missed something in that conversation. Mine are always half white or completely soaked and blended. <laughs> yeah, it, it does take some, some practice between getting just the right amount in there. And the more that you do it, you're going to just get a feel for how the dye soaks in. Uh, the other thing that I look for, and I don't see it on any of these, but sometimes you'll see little tiny white fibers, especially like on t-shirts. You'll see those kind of poke up and the, the dye will kind of, the color of the t-shirt where you put the dye will just look a little bit muted. That means that the dye has soaked in and probably needs just a little bit more. So those are things that you can look at to check for it. But the more that you practice, you're going to get a better feel for just how much dye that you need to add on there. What about the tiger print idea? Uh, the tiger print, that's one that I would probably do kind of a, a random, uh, not so much a scrunch, but I would just randomly gather the fabric up so that I have these longer creases, but not just a straight accordion fold because then you get just lines. But if you just kind of do a little bit of a, a fold in there as you're doing them, then when you dye the shirt on it, I would dye all the way orange first. And then I would probably use thick black dye and paint along the tops of these creases. And by having them just randomly folded here like that, I think that's going to give you kind of a, a tiger-like print on there. So that's that would be my idea for a tiger print. And I guess I could make a, a video of tiger print if you guys want to see that. Eventually I'm going to get back into making videos and putting them up rather than doing just the live ones. But right now the live ones have been working good within my schedule. And I figured more people are at home that would see me. What made you start tie-dyeing? Uh, well, 20 years ago, I was in the process of, with my ex-partner at the time, we were opening a book and gift store out of our house, and we were just wanting to add more handmade gifts to it. And 20 years ago, tie-dye was kind of making a little bit of a comeback, uh, and my ex, uh, Karen, she had done tie-dye in the past and she suggested that so we bought a kit and tried it out and I just fell in love with tie-dye okay this here has got enough pink in here so I think I'm going to flip this over now so I'm going to just lay this back on here the way that I had it and then I can flip that over and leave the towel underneath in fact I'll tuck it up here so it doesn't fall So anyway, so that was what started me. I, I We bought a small kit from Dharma and broke out some of our own t-shirts and we dyed up, you know, six or ten t-shirts and I just had a blast with it. So then we bought the huge tie-dye kit and a case of t-shirts 
and we started making teas. And we had our store open, it was called Indigo Child. We had that open in Pendleton for a year and then we moved it to LeGrand for a year. And then we had to close it. It just, it didn't do as well in LeGrand as it did in Pendleton. So we closed it, but I just never stopped doing tie-dye. So here I am today still doing it. Okay. <laughs> yes, the tie-dye workout at home. Yes, that's what we're all about. Um, hey, Hippie Mama. Yes, I'm having a great day. We're just doing a little bit of live video and chatting here. I'm doing a Star Mandela. And I just flipped it over. I'm dying the, the second side now. So... If you're not careful when you tilt your bottle, you can squirt dye in a place you don't want it. Yes. Uh, yeah, I do that. I, I try to remember to put my finger over the tip of the bottle, but I don't always remember that. Um, but yeah, if, if you've had a problem with dye squirting out, just putting your finger over the top and getting it where you need it is the best way to prevent that. Whenever the bottles are completely full, then they have more of a tendency to do that little splash out. So thank you David for mentioning that. Jojo says have a great day Carl be blessed. Thank you. Blessings to you too. Yeah this is I, I'm sorry this is dragging out. I, I thought it would be shorter than this but sometimes it just I just get to chatting and Things take longer to, to get through, but you'll be able to go back to, if you're having to leave, you can get back in and watch the rest of this later. Oh, I think I already did orange. We need the yellow next. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, this is just one of my random rags. Eventually, it's going to be dark. All of these rags here, they started out as white rags, and then... I, I used to do a lot of the, the school events, so I had a bunch of these rags because we just wipe up after every, every kid that comes through. But now I, for some of the bigger projects I work on, it's nicer to have a towel rather than a bunch of those rags. So I got some of these old rags and they just slowly start acquiring color and eventually they'll all be this, this shade here. So thank you. Yeah. Nice prism. Okay. The design I'm wearing now is uh, called the Quantum Scrunch. And I do have a video for that. So you can just search my channel for Quantum Scrunch. And you'll find that. I think I actually did two videos. on. I did one Quantum V. And then a Quantum Scrunch. And this one here is the Quantum Scrunch. So you can search on my channel for that. Talking and tutor tutoring is a skill that's hard to master, but you seem to have a handle on that too. <laughs> Ad lib can be <laughs> done by a master in their craft. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, I think a lot of this... Uh, came from me doing tie-dye in the schools with the kids because I'm used to having 25 or 30 kids standing around my table like right here I have to keep pushing their hands back <laughs> but all of them asking questions at the same time so yes I, I've become quite practiced at answering questions while I continue to work but also I'm working on a, an easier design I've tried doing this with a more complicated fold and trying to keep track of what I'm doing while I'm talking isn't always the easiest thing. So 
So, but thank you. Yes, I have I have practiced that and think I'm getting pretty good at it. Uh, the brand I'm using is called Fiber Reactive Procyon Dyes. I guess Procyon is the actual brand name. And I buy most of mine from Dharma. And there is a link, if you scroll back in the chat box, there is a link to the dyes that I buy. And you can also buy them from Custom Colors and Grateful Dyes. Um, and I'm sure there's many other places, but those are the three places I bought from. But most of mine come from Dharma. Okay, it looks like people are wanting to see the, the Tiger Stripes video, so I will add that to my list. In fact, I better write myself a note so I remember. Okay, I will add that in, and like I said, I'm going to try to get back to doing regular videos again soon, but I'm enjoying the live ones, and I am assuming that the 50 people I have watching right now are enjoying the live ones, too. I hope you continue with these live videos after COVID ends. Uh, I'm going to try and just keep this going. The, the Wednesday has been working pretty good. Um, after this, I might shift it to another day or something, or it might go back to where I'm doing them randomly, but I will still try to put out as much notice before a live video. But if possible, I will continue with the Wednesdays. Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-Dye. You're brave wearing a nice shirt to tie-dye in. Yeah, I usually use my older t-shirts and this one here has already got little tiny spots on it so some of my newer ones i i don't wear them although accidentally i forget i have my oscar the grouch t-shirt and there's little spots in the garbage can but i think it just kind of played into the design so i wasn't too sad about that one hey great to see you crystal uh, yep, more votes for the Tiger Stripes. I'm going to put that on my list. I made myself a note. Oh, sorry, got to See you later, Christy. Uh, like I said, you can come back and watch this again uh, when I'm all done here. I think I'm going to put one more coat on here. I like to let them soak in for a bit before I add my next coat. I think that also kind of helps the dyes from running too much is if you let them let the dye soak in a little bit. If you try to add all of your dye at once, sometimes it can't soak in far enough so it's gonna run sideways. So putting layers on and then coming back and putting another layer is really gonna help you kind of control how your dye flows. So that's what I'm doing is I'm keeping up with the chat room here is just letting my dyes soak in. Uh, have you ever gotten really hard to squeeze bottles from Dharma. Um, no, not really, but I haven't bought any from them in a while uh, because the ones I have, they just seem to keep working for me, so I haven't bought any new ones. I did prefer the shorter ones to the, the taller ones because they these ones seem just a little bit harder to squeeze, but they still been both working well for me. do uh, question it says do you think you could ever think you could go virtually to schools uh, on Google Hangouts meets and zoom calls to surprise classes um, I don't know I'd have to look into that I haven't figured out anything other than right now just the the live videos I haven't even done a Facebook live yet so, if you have ideas or uh, information on how to do that, Sarah, you can send me a message and maybe that'll be something I look into. Any kind of animal print would be really cool. Okay. Tie-dye surprise. <laughs> yeah, I love working in the schools. Uh, we go in and there was one time that I had to walk up the long, long sidewalk to the school and it just happened to be right at noontime, and the kids were outside eating their lunch. And all of a sudden, two or three of the kids seen me, 
and they're trying to quietly tell their friends because they're not they're supposed to be quiet during their lunchtime, not overly rambunctious. But as I continued to walk and get closer to the school, more and more of the kids started seeing me. And by the time I got up and around the corner there where everybody could see me, they all were standing up chanting my name. Uh, the teachers came outside trying to figure out what was going on and realized that it was just Mr. Tie-Dye. <laughs> so, yes, I can quite, cause quite the commotion when I go into the schools. But it was a lot of fun. It gave me that rock star moment hearing my name chanted by 300 kids. Oh, it looks like we got a new bid. Trisha uh, bid 105 for the tapestry. So, thank you. Let's see. Have you ever done a Jerry Garcia hand with missing fingertip? Yeah, the way that I do those, though, is I just, I paint the die onto my hand and then press my hand onto the t-shirt. So that's, that's the way that I've done the Jerry hand. And with the, the missing finger, what you do is, well, I guess it's this way, and you just paint part way up. I think the last one I did, I painted a little bit too far, so you have to watch just how high up you paint the, the die. And then I usually will put my hand down and make sure that I press on each one of my fingers to get the die down onto the t-shirt. And then if I need to, I'll put a second coat. And you have to just make sure you line your hand up nice and even and then press it down again. And I did that. I put, uh, I sprayed the shirt with soda ash and then let it dry. And then I did that. Because and I did it with thick dye, so that it would stay in place. So, hope that helps you with your Jerry hand. Love your videos. Learned most of my skills and been watching you since I started. That's excellent. I'm glad to be have helped you, uh, Zookalutes, the pipe pipe pirate. Good to see you. I don't know if I pronounced that first name right or not. Uh, made the X design a few days ago. My kids enjoy watching your videos. We are all new to tie-dye. Awesome. Yeah, the X is a, a fun one to do. Okay, so I think I'm going to put one more coat of all of my colors on here. And this here is my black for here. I've already put my, my uh, cobalt on. So I'm going to coat this outer part with black. And then I'm going to add more dye to each one of my colors here. And then I think we're going to call this good. So we'll be ending this soon. So right now the, the high bid for the tapestry is sitting at 105. So if anybody else wants to get a bid in, now would be the time. Seems like you have an awful lot of extra dye in those bottles. Do you keep it? Or are you making more stuff today? I'm constantly having to pour dye down the drain. Uh, no, I don't. I, the, these dyes last for two to three weeks. Um, if you're buying the store kits, like the, the tulip dyes or the one-step dye kits, those typically, I don't, I don't want to say this about all of them, but the ones that I've seen people come to me with, they had soda ash that's mixed in with the dye powder. So as soon as you add water to those dyes, the dye becomes active and it needs to be used. So if people are buying the store-bought kits that are one step, I recommend that you get all your stuff tied up first and then mix your dyes and that's going to give you the best colors. And also, I think they don't put enough soda ash in, so it's also recommended that if possible, if you still do a pre-soak in soda ash, that's going to improve your colors. But if you step up to the Procyon dyes, then they're going to last, like I say, two to three weeks at room temperature. If you store them in the refrigerator, then they're going to last even longer. So, yes, I have an awful lot of dye in these bottles. I mix my bottles up in quart-sized jugs, and then I fill the 16-ounce bottles with these so that I can sit down at any point that I want to, and I have dye. I usually have 12 to 15 colors mixed up at a time. So when I mix dyes, I'm mixing up like two or three gallons of dye at a time. But I do a lot of tie-dye too, so that's part of it for me. Okay, what else we got going on here? Yep, thank you for mentioning the refrigerator. Yeah, that's a, a good idea if you have 
uh, the spare space in your refrigerator or an extra fridge is probably the best thing just to keep your dye and your food separate and how do you arrange going to the schools that would be so fun to do that in my area uh, for me when I was doing the school events I was getting most of my business just from people coming in uh, to my booth during the summer and I would put signs up at my booth and announce that I do the uh, school events and then it's a matter of figuring out your prices and on my website I have my prices and you can use that kind of as a as a guideline if you want to but it's a matter of figuring out your prices and letting the schools know what you do and that you're available for that so but I think all of mine came from the, the schools contacting me but that was because I was out at the Saturday market and I had signs up that announced that and then after that then it was word of mouth once one school does it then the other schools want to do it also so yeah it's a matter of figuring out your prices so that you can tell the schools what you're going to charge them and then figuring out your your time for that and i just work with the schools they usually told me what days worked best for them and they arranged the schedule i usually do like an hour to an hour and 15 minutes with each class with a 10 to 15 minute break in between. And I always have the school provide parent helpers to help with the whole process. So, and yes, it's a lot of fun. I've, I've done many schools over the years. And sometimes I go in and just do just a couple classes. Um, we've done tie-dye book bags with the kindergarten classes. So, yeah, there's lots of options to do around the schools and stuff. Uh, Sarah, yes, please email me. I would like to have more information on that so that I can look into that further. And let's see, my... You can send me a message through my Facebook if you want, and there will be, let me post this in the chat room. This here is my launch links. This here has a link to all of my different social media platforms. One of them is, of course, a link to messaging me on Facebook. But if you want to visit my store, then you can also do a contact me and that'll come directly into my email box then. And then also whoever wins the tapestry, you can use this launch links to send me a message with your email. Or you can also just click on that to go right to PayPal and pay for it that way if you like. Uh, let's see. I think I'm about done here. I'm going to open up this the creases here on this fuchsia one. Since this here is the biggest one, I can open this crack up right here where my folds are and just take a peek inside. I can see that I got just a little bit of white left down in there. So what I'm going to do is add just a little bit more dye to these bigger sections here. So and that's that's just a good way to, to do it is just keep adding dye and letting it soak in and then in the end you can peek in there by opening that crack up there the creases and that way you make sure you get nice saturation going on your whole tapestry that's the the longest thing I think is the the dying of this because you just need a little bit of space in between your layers to allow that dye to soak down inside so it doesn't go in and run sideways Uh, yeah, I'll show the tapestry in just a minute. As soon as I put this in the box here, I'll break the tapestry back out. But the tapestry size is 54 inches by 56 inches. And it's one of the Sunshine Joy tapestries, and it has the, the little loops for hanging in the corners. Okay. 
Okay, Jenny asked, uh, the shirt you're wearing right now, how did you make that? This one here is called a Quantum Scrunch, and I do have a video for this one on my channel here, if you just look up Quantum Scrunch. And once I'm done here, maybe I can find a link for you and post it here in the box. I just want to make sure that I get enough dye squeezed into this thing. I'm just kind of letting this rest a little bit. I just kind of, sometimes I'll add dye and just look at the colors and look how it soaks in to give me an idea if I need to add more dye down in there. As soon as the, these all stay looking just a little bit wet, then that's usually good too. And like I say, you can speed the process up by using your cuticle pusher and press on them and that will help get the die pushed down in there further so on these smaller sections that works really nice and let's see love working with the kids they are so brutally honest yes and they also have their own ideas i i get a few kids that i walk through and show them several different designs and then they'll ask me if they can do their own design and I usually tell them that as long as it's going to uh, die up nicely, if I look at it, then I will accept that and I usually will bend it up and pass them over to the dyeing station and let them dye the shirts up. And sometimes the color combinations are also awesome also. In the schools, one of the things I do is work with just primary colors. So my fuchsia, my turquoise, and my lemon yellow. And then I teach color mixing right on the t-shirt. So that's something in my uh, spiral video. The first one that I dye in there, because I dye eight different spirals in different manners. Well, the first one I do is a three color uh, rainbow spiral. So you can go check that out. But that's what how I do it in the schools, is use just the primary colors. And that way I'm not trying to mix up six or more colors for the schools, because when I go into the schools, I'm mixing up uh, six to nine to 12 gallons at a time uh, I usually will mix up maybe I think six gallons and then each day I'll mix up a little bit more okay I think this here is about ready to sit and batch now I think I got enough layers on all of these the colors all kind of stay in I'm not seeing any of the little fibers poking up so I think I'm gonna set this aside and let this batch for 48 hours and then I will do a video reveal on this and have that posted and then like i say next week i will do a video and i will auction off this tapestry but for now we're going to get in to the other one so set that aside for washing let me wipe this table up show this tapestry again. I think right now the high bid is sitting at 105. There's the last that I saw. I'll go back and take a look before we announce the winning though. And thank you guys all for joining me here again today on this live video. So like I say this tapestry is 54 inches by 56 inches and it's got the zigzag DNA on it. So it just zigzags top to bottom here. Unless you hang it the other way and then they, there's two of them that go side to side. So then the other one is right over here. So two zigzag DNA designs and then in the middle and on the edges it's the cobalt with the black over top. So we got a bid of 105. So I'm going to close that out in one minute. So if anybody wants to bid higher than that, go ahead and place your bids now. Uh, let's see. Thanks for all your tips. We appreciate it. Well, thank you, Grace. I appreciate all of you guys joining me here. 
and we even got 35 likes on this video so far and sorry for whoever disliked it um, I guess my channel is just not for you but this is what we got so um, there's plenty of other people out there that are teaching tie-dye and maybe somebody else will have videos you like uh, is there any way of making pastel colors uh, yes there's two different ways that I do that um, I would probably for pastel they are usually very very light so I would start out with about this much regular strength dye in my bottle and then fill this bottle up with uh, regular water and that's going to thin that dye out quite a bit and then you would still do your soak in soda ash dye it and batch it as normal and but as far as just how light your colors are that's something that I haven't sat down and figured out exact amounts yet but usually this here is a good starting point and then what I usually will do to test out my colors is just put a drop on a piece of white paper towel to kind of get an idea of how light it is so and that's that's one way of doing the pastels and one other way that I have done it which uses more dye but it's something that it does work is I'll use my regular strength dyes and I will tie my thing up, put my dyes on, and then instead of batching it, I let it sit for about five minutes, and then I go right into the washing process. So in that way, very minute amount of dye has bonded, and then you're going to get lighter colors. But like I say, the best way is to mix your colors really light, because then it doesn't take much at all. If you're using the powders, then... Um, like I said, I don't have an amount just yet. Eventually, I think I might do a video and kind of test out the pastels and see just how much powdered dye to add. But uh, usually what I do is I just start out with just a little bit in the bottom of a bottle and fill it up the rest of the way with water. And that gives me my pastel colors. Okay. You are definitely the knowledge gold mine for tie-dye. Oh, thank you, Sven. Or Svertin. I had it right the first time and then messed it up. It's 100% my therapy. Awesome. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Glad to know you're not doing therapy with my kids, but. Yeah, I've had a few people tell me that my voice is very soothing and that they'll put my tie-dye videos on in the background so let's see okay I think uh, we're gonna close the the bid out so let's announce the winner we I think it was at 105 uh, oh Trisha okay congratulations Trisha this tapestry is yours I will go ahead and put this in your pile for you and I will add that on to your invoice She's one of my regular customers and buys a lot of my dyes. And I'll check through. I don't see any other bids in here. So, yeah, I think we're going to close that out. And I'm going to go through and see if I can answer more questions. But if not, then we'll close this out too. Okay, Cassie's voting for a pastel video, so I will add that. Let me make a note. I will figure out some amounts of dye to use for pastel video and add that in. And one of these days I'll get caught. I have a whole big list of videos to shoot. I can only do so many of them on live because I need to be able to maintain the chat room while I'm actually doing the work. So, let's see. Do you use Rhea? Um, I do sometimes, but not all the time. And yes, I do use the gasoline oil. I think in one of my quart sized bottles, when I'm mixing this amount of dye, I think I put 15 drops. In. So I just have my gasoline oil in just a little syringe here and I just add 15 drops to my bottles when I'm mixing that up and what that what the gasoline oil does This here is from Dharma 
and what it does is help break the the surface tension and help your dyes to soak in um, I discovered this several years ago when I was doing the the tie-dye labyrinth and I had fabric that just didn't want to accept the dye and Jeremy St. Rebel uh, clued me into this Kathleen oil said that it will help break that surface tension allow the dye to soak in so I've been using it ever since so, but yeah, the urea is something that I use sometimes, but not always. And for me, it's just, if, if I have the time to make up, because I usually will make up my dye water ahead of time and then pour it in gallon-sized jugs. If I have the time to make up a batch, then I'll, I'll use this. But sometimes I sit down to do tie-dye and I don't have any dye water mixed. So I just go for it with just the plain water. So urea does work. I do use it, just not all the time. Uh, you're welcome, Alan, for the live session. Yep, more pastel videos. Thank you. Yes, I want everybody out there to stay well, stay, stay healthy, and try to stay as calm as you can. Make sure you stay in touch with all your friends and family and loved ones. Tell them that you're thinking about them. Uh, at home, I put hearts in my window because people say that, you know, kids go out on a scavenger hunt, so... Just do something to show the world, show your family, show your friends that you love them and care for them. We're going to get through this together. Uh, let's see. You need an assistant during your live videos to help out. They can keep up the chat for you. Yes, I do. <laughs> that would be great. A volunteer as tribute. Is that a... Um, Mockingbird reference. <laughs> tie-dye labyrinth. Yes, I did a 100 by 100 foot tie-dye labyrinth. I made over 100 panels that were 10 feet uh, wide and 7 feet tall. And then down in California, we posted uh, the big tea stakes into the ground, tied them up. So then it became this big labyrinth. Uh, so you, if you're on my Facebook page, you can see pictures of that over there, or I will try to remember to put a link to that down in the uh, question, the comment section down below. Oh, hearts in the window. Oh, thank you, Kristen. Yeah, that's just a fun thing to do. Uh, much love to you, Tricia. He has a video. Yes, I have a video of me walking through the labyrinth. I also I died about. A little more than 100 panels but then I had um, I can't remember the count but I think it's like 15 to 17 of my other tie-dye friends out there that they I sent them a blank tapestry so I had some other artists that participated in that so that was a lot of fun I appreciate everybody that helped in in that whole process let's see in the UK, we have rainbow on the windows for the kids. Uh, I'm just going to hang up one of my tie-dyes. Yes, I have rainbow curtains on, well, I think all of our curtains in our house is rainbow. And I have tie-dye up on the ceiling and tie-dye on the walls. We have tie-dye everywhere. Peace out, hippie mama. Great to see you. Have a great time living large. See you later, Bernie Cox. Okay, thank you guys for joining me for this live edition of... Mr. Tie Wednesdays with Mr. Tie Dye. I had fun. I hope you guys had fun. And peace out, everybody.